Hey guys, Thunder E here, and yes, this is the Mustang Marquee, and uh, let's go for a ride. All right, guys, we are back again with another Let's Drive video, and this is the Mustang Marquee, lovely car. Um, and if you join us for the first time, we do uh, car videos like this. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, notification icon, so you can get notified with more videos. Now that's out of the way. Let's get into this vehicle we have here. This is an all electric Mustang. It's the first of its kind. And it was interesting that Mustang went with uh, sort of like a crossover design as opposed to the traditional Mustang look. Now, the car itself is one that packs in a ton of features and a very unique design. Like I mentioned, this is basically a crossover. Uh, Design-wise, you've got something that uh, feels like an SUV but drives better than a regular Mustang, yes. Now, the configuration I have here uh, is the Marquee 660. Um, I have it in the orange color. Yes, people have flagged me down thinking I'm a, I'm a cab. Uh, in the city, uh, in New York City. Uh, but let's talk about the design and styling itself. Now, in front of the car, you've got that Mustang logo where the grille should be, uh, which takes up that space. It's really nice, it looks really good. Clean lines coming up, LED lights in the front as well. You can open up the front, and uh, that will shows you some, some storage space there, not much, but at least good enough to put like a bag or something in there, as well as also changing your wiper fluid. Then you've got some very trim lines across the side, a massive moon roof that doesn't open up, but it's still really nice. And then you've also got the traditional Mustang uh, rear lights at the back that come out and they look really, really nice. So that's something to mention. This thing packs in a bunch of power, 90, 91 kilowatt um, battery. Uh, you also have up to 290 miles in terms of range. And then when it comes to uh, horsepower, 346 horsepower, you've got a couple of drive modes that you can switch to. Uh, Whisper, uh, if I just kind of go in here to even check that out, you've got Whisper, Engage, and Unbridle. This brings us to one of the first things about this car. Whisper is great. You have a lot of speed with Whisper, as you can feel here. But when I switch to Unbridle, it feels like you just unleash the Mustang entirely. This thing is aggressive, but also well tamed. So it's one of those things where I can go this fast and pass the truck next to me with ease. And of course you do have, um, you know, generated sounds you can actually add or put into this. Now the other thing of course is the, blues, the Blue Cruise 1.2 control. I can set that and I'm good to go. So. With those controls, you, you do have the ability to just kind of leave the steering wheel and then let it just go on its own and it does its own thing. It's pretty nice, it's pretty straightforward and you can also go ahead and, um, you know, switch lanes if you choose to, that kind of fun stuff. So I'm gonna just trafficate and see if it switches. It does that for me without even wasting any time and my hands are up in the air, which is pretty cool. So let's slow down for a bit Let's go ahead and take the nearest exit here and chat more about some of the things that I do like about this vehicle, right? So as we get off the exit, you find that this car is very, very spacious. So whether you're sitting in the front or the back, I'm six feet two, you've got a lot of headroom here, so I'm not touching the ceiling. Same thing in the back seats as well. Uh, and it's very comfortable to sit down. I kind of like just enjoy the experience of the car. The other thing to note also is the interior. So when you walk up to the car, uh, you open the door, mind you, which doesn't have a door handle. You do have to hit a button to open the door, either for the driver or the passengers at the back. Um, that's something that you kind of have to get used to. There is also like a, a number pad uh, on the side of the door for the driver's side and the passenger in the front for you to get into the car. But once you actually get into the vehicle, you're greeted with a uh, front cluster that's kind of rectangular. There's no heads up display, but it kind of works in the same way. Very clean, shows you your range, um, also gives you uh, the speed you're currently driving uh, at, and also what your blue, blue cruise control is doing. Now, the other aspect too is the giant display here on the right. This is not in your typical 
um, you know, landscape mode is in portrait mode, which mm, not a big fan of, but you will get used to it. You've got a nice massive display at the very bottom. There's this giant ring for the volume as well as also uh, your temperature controls. Those don't change whatever you're doing while driving your car, uh, but the upper part of the display will change when you have things to do. So for instance, if you want to go into controls, check out, change the car controls, be it like from whisper to bright as you saw earlier, or you can go to the home page where you do have apps, uh, apps for navigation, the charging. They also entertainment apps, which you can only use when the car is parked, showing you some games, also accessing YouTube and things like that. So that aspect is pretty simple and easy to use. Now, the other part that I think is quite interesting is, of course, the launch controls. And you can see I've got a nice straightaway here in front of me. And just giving you an idea of what launch actually feels like, it is truly impressive. You hit on bridle, you wait, hit the brake, the gas, and go. Now, this thing has got some really great speed and launch control, very nice. It just feels very fluid driving this car. But launch controls are basically found on your shifter. You just hit the center button that says L, and that's launch, and then you're good to go. Switch back to Whisper. Now, the car, of course, supports DC fast charging. You've got those capabilities there, which you can actually use. I'm gonna pull over for the second here. And what's cool about that is that you've got um, the ability to use the Ford Pass app on your phone to do a lot more when it comes to fast charging. So when I grab my device here, I can go into the Ford app and I can go ahead and look at a bunch of things. I can look for locations where charging ports are and charging places are, and I've got access to that to, to, to charge for free. So I did that a couple of times, which was great. Uh, but the, the app itself gives you a lot of functionality. The first thing you see straight up, it tells you your car. You can add more vehicles. So if you've got more than one Mustang E or Ford vehicle that's an electric, you can add it to this app. And, you know, um, you can easily access the car. It shows you the battery level, uh, amount of distance you have left to, to drive the car. Uh, you, it also shows you view charges. So basically, you can find charges as soon as possible. You can start the car. You can unlock the car. Uh, you've got also vehicle options showing you charging, safety, tire pressure, all that fun stuff in there, uh, service assistance and things like that. So the app is quite extensive in what it actually brings to the table. The car also comes with a bunch of charging features. You do have uh, a wireless charging pad right below the front cluster that only charges one device, not two, even though you can see the two sections there. There is type C charging and type A charging. And then right behind the center armrest at the bottom for the back seats, you do have a type C and a type A as well. A lot of storage compartments underneath the wireless charging part, underneath the handrest as well. Uh, and again, sitting in the back seat is pretty comfortable. Now, I haven't talked about the interior as much, right? Because I wanted to focus on some of the other aspects of the car, but the interior is really nice. You come into the car, you're greeted with a, a plethora of really nice, comfortable materials. So uh, you've got some nice soft leather on the chair, which are heated uh, seats as well. Very comfortable to sit on. The dash area, you've got uh, three materials. You've got a hard plastic at the very top. You've got fabric near the displays, especially around your front cluster. You've, you've got carbon fiber right next to the power button area. And then you've got leather or at least uh, full leather uh, right here with some nice stitching across. Audio, Banger Olsen speakers really come out pretty nice and clean, so I do like that. And then in terms of just your button controls, on the right door itself, you've got all your uh, uh, window features, uh, of course, your side mirrors and all that fun stuff. Uh, but the one thing I will mention when it comes to the door itself is They've got a unique way, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of opening the door from outside and also internally as well. The latch to open up the door is right by uh, inside the side handle, but it's kind of like a pull latch. So it's very interesting, a very different, unique way. Something you have to get used to, but works out pretty well. Now, the, the trunk is massive. It's big for what it is. Again, it's a crossover, so you've got a, more space. So you can put in... Uh, decent sized luggage in, or as you can see here, I've got a bunch of packages. I can, you can pull that out and use quite effectively. This car is very connected. So using the app or even controlling things 
off the main display here, like opening the, the trunk and the frunk and also some of the other features with the driver assist really go a long way. But the main question you're gonna ask is, how is the driving experience and did you like it? Honestly say for the first time in my life driving a Mustang, this is probably the best Mustang I've ever driven. It felt really comfortable to drive. Uh, it also felt really aggressive and agile. I like the fact that the corners handled really well. Um, and the one thing I'll mention though is that when you're driving and you're driving faster and you hit a bump, you're just gonna bounce up. So I'm not sure how the shocks handle and the struts are on this car. Uh, and maybe it's just because this, of course, is a test vehicle. That might be the case as well. Uh, but it was a great experience to drive around this car. I spent a week with the Ford Mustang. The other thing is um, mileage, mileage range. I got the car um, oh, for a week, as I mentioned, and um, 290 miles. I didn't get it at full mileage. I got around 80 percent and I was able to drive it for a week without needing to charge until you know like the sixth day or so so uh put it how you take it how you will now i was driving more aggressively i was using more of the faster charging cranking up the ac because of course again it's summer so you can kind of mix that in there but anyway besides that i can continue ranting about the car and talk about many different things but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and just to let you know we used uh, a bunch of different cameras to shoot this so i'm using the gopro 11 for my A-roll, that camera over there is the GoPro 10. The front camera on my chest is the Insta360, uh, Insta Go 360. Oh no, no, actually it's actually the Insta360 Go 3. That's the name. And uh, then the B-roll was shot with the Nothing Phone 2. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or any comments about this vehicle and you want to know more about the, uh, the Ford Mustang E, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.